Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to study another very important disorder that is the acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, also said to be the ANUC. Now moving ahead with what is this term actually? It is nothing but just a kind of gingivitis only that is inflammation of your gums which can also be known as Vincent infection and the trench mouth. So you see it is a very common but at the same time very area specific type of gingivitis which manifests in both acute and the recurrent phases. Now this inflammation mainly involves the gingival margin, the crest of the gingiva and the interdental papilla. If we see in the figure, this is the marginal gingiva, the margins of the gingiva. This is the free crest gingiva and this here is your interdental gingiva. So these are basically the sites where most commonly or specifically the anus will be noticed. Lesions may spread to the soft tissues and to the palate and to the tonsillar area. So if the lesion is spreading to the palate and the tonsillar area from the soft tissues, then we can set this to be the Vincent angina. Okay, so only you are going to set Vincent angina when it is in the tonsillar region also and in the palatal region also it has spread. It. Coming to the etiology. The etiology, there is not just one microorganism, but there are two microorganisms. So we say that it is an endogenous polymicrobial, that is more than one, polymicrobial infection which leads to destructive inflammation. Now these microbial infections or these microorganisms are not just alone leading to the anus. There are certain other factors which combine or which give these microorganisms a kind of environment which helps them to grow. Now what are the causative organisms first? The fusiform bacillus and the Borrelia vincenti is basically the organism which leads to ANUC. Now this Borrelia is actually a kind of pyrochete. So these are the two organisms which lead to the acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. If you see, these organisms are also present in a healthy gingiva. In a normal healthy gingiva also, these organisms are there. But in this kind of gingiva, the amount is going to be very, very small in number. But whenever they come in relationship with any of the various factors which leads to the overgrowth, then this condition is known as ANUG, okay? So in a healthy gingiva also, these organisms are present. But when they overgrow, when there is an overgrowth of these organisms then that condition is known as ANUC. Now what are these various factors which can lead to the overgrowth? There can be certain psychological stress especially in the military people, those people who are in the military in the trench areas there they do not get that much of time to take care of their oral hygiene and the oral health. So gingivitis can be seen in these people hence it is so said to be the trench mouth also because that condition is a trench condition where these military people do their duty. Another thing is immunosuppression. Any person who is having any kind of disease whether that is HIV or anything due to which the immunization of the immune system is being suppressed that is another predisposing factor than smoking, upper respiratory tract infection, local trauma, poor oral hygiene and as I told you HIV positive people who are having a weaker immune system are the ones which are majorly affected to it. Moving ahead, here you can see some of the clinical presentation of anus through which you can see that there are kind of ulcers and bleeding from the gingiva and most appropriate and most focused thing is the redness. Can you see how inflamed and red this area is? This is a characteristic feature of anus and especially in the sites like the gingival margin, crest and the interdental gingiva. Coming to the clinical features, we discussed about the etiology, we discussed about the meaning, we discussed where it is found. Now how does it appear? When you see the disease will mainly be characterized by two things. First is going to be pain, second is going to be a hyperemic gingiva which means excessive red gingiva. When the gingiva gets inflamed, the color changes into bright red color. That will be seen, okay? With that, you will see sharply punched out crater-like erosions or lesions can be seen. The ulceration usually spread extensively on the margins of the gingiva. Fetid odor, very important. A very bad odor is developed which extremely, you know, and it seems very unpleasant and very disturbing and uncomfortable to the other person as well as to the patient. So a fetid odor, bad odor is there and which is also said to be halitosis. 
Other than that, painful red gingiva will be seen and most importantly, crater-like erosions or crater-like lesions are seen. Now, what are crater-like lesions? These kind of lesions are said to be the crater-like lesion. Crater basically means bowel, okay? So, whenever there is, whenever somebody is saying crater-like lesions, it means a bowel kind of lesion. This is a crater-like erosion. Now, coming to another features, another some clinical features. As I told you, pain will be seen with pain. The pain will be superficial pressure kind of pain. Superficial pressure is, for example, if this is your gingiva, the patient will feel that there is some kind of pressure from the environment which has been created on the gingiva. There will be a superficial pressure kind of pain. Another thing, patients cannot eat not just because of the pain but also because of the gingival bleeding. There is so much of bleeding in inflammation and ulcers. They readily bleed and so the patient is not able to eat. At the same time, the patient cannot even brush his teeth usually suffers from headache, malaise and low grade fever. These are some characteristic or you can say these are some extra features. Excess salivation will be seen with metallic taste. There will be metallic taste in the patient's mouth. After when the NIG is cured, now after when you have treated this situation, this has been cured, usually these kind of crests are formed after the treatment or after the whole healing procedure, these kind of crests are formed. Now imagine, whenever you eat something, the debris will come and accumulate at this site, okay? So this site is kind of acting like a zone or a kind of area which is giving a site of accumulation to the debris as well as to the bacteria. So this is also said to be the incubation zone. So when the anag is cured, these sites, these crests are formed which gives a kind of zone for the debris and bacteria accumulation so this zone is said to be the incubation zone moving ahead to the histological features now microscopically when we examine this situation we will see that there is gingivitis of course there will be some inflammation which will be seen other than that extensive necrosis will be seen in the gingiva if we talk about the stratified squamous epithelium layer the layer will be ulcerated at the same time, the layer will be replaced by the thick fibrous exudate material, okay? For example, this is your layer. Then the layer will be kind of uh, filled or replaced by some thick fibrous exudate material. Moving ahead with the connective tissue. Connective tissue is usually filled by polynuclear leukocytes. Now, there will be polymorphonuclear leukocytes which will be very densely arranged in the new connective tissue layer, okay? In the connective tissue layer, the polymorph nucleos, uh, polymorphonuclear leukocytes will be extensively or densely, you can say, arranged, due to which a excessive redness which will be seen, okay? Excessive redness will be seen in this condition. Coming to the treatment, superficial cleaning with the oral cavity, uh, of the oral cavity with chlorhexidine or either diluted hydrogen peroxide or normal warm saline can be suggested to the patient. You can suggest the patient to take either this superficial cleaning or maybe simply take warm saline and do gargles which will help the patient. If the condition is even more severe, you have to go for scaling and root planing. Even if it is not severe, you have to go for this because this is a kind of cleaning which you have to do. So scaling and root planing can be done. Antibiotic therapy should be done to combat the infection. Other than that, if your treatment is very, very good, the healing procedure will start in the next 48 hours only. In the next 48 hours only, the patient will start feeling very, very better. But there are chances of reoccurrence which can be seen. So this was all about the video. If you like the video, please like the video, share this with your friends and subscribe my channel. Thank you.